So I just got back from Lowe's and they had these carnivorous plant death cubes. But I have not seen one of these in forever. This is a Nepenthes. And I like the packaging, but these things are such a bad thing. Uh, they usually die in here before they even get sold. But this one was in really good shape, but still, I want to get it out of here. Here's some of the info. Now what's nice about this is that unlike the version that was in the other video, uh, the information on this is not that inaccurate actually. Carnivorous plants attract, catch, and digest insects. That's true. Planted in peat or sphagnum moss. That's not even a complete sentence. Uh, Nepenthes do not do well in peat, but sphagnum moss, yes. Indoors thrives well on windowsill, can place outdoor in saucer during warmer months. Wow, this is really bad English. It must have been written by a foreigner. It's just so wrong. You don't want to leave Nepenthes in standing water. <clears throat> this applies more to things like Venus flytraps and Saracenias. But you definitely don't want to leave it inside this bar. It can be hand-fed insects, but is not necessary. That's true. Keep soil moist. That's also true. Never below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use treated water, insecticides, or fertilizers. That's all not bad. So, I really do like the art on these. I mean, this is the selling point, and I know it attracts kids and monster enthusiasts. So there were some tapes on the sides. I cut them, and then I just opened the top lid. And the problem with these is that um, they don't keep the humidity in here. These guys end up drying out. The people in the stores do not water them. So they die, and hence that's why these are called the death cubes. Another problem with these types of death cubes is that these guys can also be fresh out of tissue culture, which means that they would be not hard enough, they'd be really soft. This one looks pretty good. Um, if it was in a really soft, bad state, you would have to put it into a bag and slowly harden it off by letting, putting holes in it every few days until it was able to take normal outside air. So I just reached in and yanked the whole thing out. I don't know what's up with this plastic collar, but that's really bad. You don't want to just lift that up and rip it out. You'd probably destroy the plant doing that. So I'm just going to cut it right there. So now it has been freed from that collar. It comes in what seems to be 100% sphagnum peat moss. Some of the pictures were squished under that collar. So I'm very glad I took this out of the pot, actually. This is not 100% sphagnum. It's only partially sphagnum. Now, if you look at the bottom of this plant, the rest of this is all peat inside this pot. This is terrible for Nepenthes. Too heavy, and it would just clog up their roots. But the pot can be reused. I'll be keeping that. And the other thing I don't like about this is that it comes in this, uh, looks like a tomato plug. If so, that's also 100% peat, which is way too heavy. It's a wonder that this poor plant has grown as big as it has. I have no idea how it could have gotten this big. So here is the plant. The roots look decent. They're a bit small, but they'll grow out and can be, they can be saved. Now here's the mix I'm going to use. I have mixed this myself. This is uh, equal parts of New Zealand's sphagnum moss. I'll put a picture up of the kind that I use. Uh, coarse perlite and orchid bark. You can get at least two of these ingredients in most hardware stores. The uh, sphagnum moss I did buy from Amazon. Here is the 
Lowe's rescued Ventricosa. I sure hope this is a male, because I bought him for my female right here. This is uh, Ventricosa K, proven female. So there you go, you guys. And today is December 17th, and here is the Lowe's rescue plant. Now it's looking really nice. It finally made big, beautiful pictures. But I am disappointed about one thing with this plant. And that's that it was mislabeled. No surprise since they seem to can't get most of the stuff right. This is not a Nepenthes ventricosa. This is a Ventrata. It's a hybrid between Alata and Ventricosa. So even if this is a male, I won't be crossing this one with my pure Ventricosa that I have outside. So that's really disappointing. Maybe some of them are true vent Ventricosas. I guess the only way to find out is to keep trying to rescue them. And uh, you can see the old growth in there. And how far it's come. Yeah, the pictures are great, so I do recommend this if you guys want a, an easy, inexpensive plant. Definitely rescue these guys, and they're easy to take care of, and this is what the pictures turned out to be like on my plant. I have three or four of these already, so not too happy, but they are cute, pretty pictures. There you go. Lowe's. Death Cube Nepen Nepenthes.